It's a great way to include some plank work in a different plane of motion, because often we turn to mountain climbers when we're thinking about doing cardio. Hey guys, it's Corey from Redefining Strength, and today I wanna to share with you five moves to get in a full body HIIT workout. When you're short on time, you can still get in a killer workout. We just need to be very efficient with the movements we include and how we design the workout. So whether or not you're gonna do 30, 15, so 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest, or 40, 20, or 20, 10, you can use these moves to get in a killer workout based on the time you have. Because even when you're short on time, that's no excuse to skip your workout. So what are five moves for a full body workout? Exercise number one is the tuck jump to plank tuck. This is a great core intensive cardio move. While I like the standard burpee because it includes the push-up, I also dislike it for that reason. I feel like the push-up often becomes a worm or it just slows us down so we can't get the full cardio benefit. So by removing the push-up and instead adding in a knee tuck when you're in the plank position, we can get an extra core work while also keeping your blood pumping. Adding in the tuck jump at the top also makes it a more challenging move cardiovascularly as well as for our legs. You wanna perform a jump back into that plank position, then jump your knees and to tuck them towards your elbows. Don't jump in so close you're resting back on your heels. Jump your feet back out on the plank, making sure your hands stay under your shoulders. It's really tempting when we're in that plank position to let our shoulders shrug, but we wanna make sure we're engaging our upper back to protect our shoulders and prevent neck and shoulder pain. You'll then jump your feet back into your hands and stand up. As you stand up, you're gonna do a tuck jump. Really try and tuck your knees up as high as you can. As you move to land, you wanna almost think about shooting your legs out to meet the ground. You wanna think landing on the balls of your feet and then rocking back to your heels. You don't wanna land with your legs locked out. Really think about bending your knees to absorb the shock. Because this is a high impact move, beginners might wanna start with a step back instead of jumping back and tuck one knee in at a time. They might also wanna do a squat instead of the tuck jump. Whether or not you include the jumps, you wanna make sure that you're moving quickly. If you're not able to move quickly, even stepping back, you can reduce the range of motion by doing this move off a bench. The key with this movement is to move as quickly as possible to really get your blood pumping. Exercise number two is the plyo jack push-up. I love plyo push-ups as an explosive upper body movement. They're a really challenging movement though, and if you can't be explosive with them, you can start with them off of a bench. I also like this plyo jack push-up option because it combines not only an upper body plyometric, but also a lower body jump. So even if you can't do the upper body plyo push-up right now, you can include the jump out and in with your feet. This is a great way to work your core even more as you get your blood pumping. Plus, you can rest your legs a little bit as you work your upper body as you cycle through these five moves for a great full body workout. When you do this push-up, make sure that you're trying to be explosive and quick as you jump your hands and feet out wide and then back in. You'll want to lower into the push-up each time you land. Make sure that you're not landing with your arms locked out, but you're actually bending your elbows to help you absorb the shock. Exercise number three is the single leg deadlift hop. This is a super challenging balance movement that will really work your posterior chain. It's a great way to target your hamstrings and glutes while working on your power and also your unilateral strength. While you wanna focus on moving quickly and really try and explode up off the ground, you're gonna to have to work to balance as you kick your leg back and hinge over. Make sure you're not just reaching or rounding towards the ground, but actually hinging at the hips to load your glutes. You'll then wanna drive back up to standing and explode off the ground as you tuck that knee up and forward. Make sure you're really engaging your abs to help you drive off the ground and pull that knee up. As you land back down, you'll wanna keep your knees soft before you hinge back over. This is a super challenging move. To modify it, you might exclude the jump and instead just do a single leg deadlift to knee. This is still a great way to target your posterior chain, so your hamstrings and glutes, while also working your abs as you tuck your knee up. Make sure to really squeeze your glute to stay balanced as you perform that knee tuck. Exercise number four is plank skaters. Plank skaters are a great way to target your shoulders, abs, quads, and really get your blood pumping as you're focused on that core strength. When you do this move, make sure that your shoulders aren't shrugged. It's really tempting to put our hands way out in front of our shoulders and allow our traps to take over. Make sure you're engaging your back as you set up with one foot out to the side and the other right behind you. You wanna think about keeping your knees about under your hips as you move laterally. It's a great way to include some plank work in a different plane of motion, because often we turn to mountain climbers when we're thinking about doing cardio. As you move side to side, you're gonna extend one leg out as you tuck the other one in. You're gonna really feel your quads working. Make sure you also brace your abs to keep your hips still. While you are moving your legs laterally, you don't want your hips to be bouncing all over the place. You wanna really focus on that core strength to keep your core stable and still as you move in the skater position back and forth. Beginners might start by stepping one foot in as they step the other foot out instead of jumping. They might also do this off the bench because it requires less mobility when your hands are up on a bench. Exercise number five is balanced bicycles. 
I like to include a core focused isolation move in all of my workouts, especially my cardio workouts as active recovery. It's a great way to get in that little extra core work while you also bring your heart rate down so that you can go hard during the other more compound movements. Balanced bicycles is a great way to work your quads, hips, abs as you bring your heart rate down so that you can recover enough to go back to those tuck jump to plank tucks. When we're short on time, we want to maximize the time that we have to work out. That means including active rest moves like this core intensive move so that we can recover enough, but also still keep working. To do the balanced bicycles, you're going to balance on your sit bones. You're going to sort of rest on the back of your butt. You want to bring both legs up and tuck one knee at a time. You'll sort of bicycle your legs in and out as you stay balanced right here. If you find you're engaging your lower back, make sure that you're really performing that C-sit. You want to think about almost drawing your hip bones towards your rib cage to engage your abs. If you find your low back engaging from this balanced position, you can lie back on the ground and use that posterior pelvic tilt to press your lower back into the ground as you bicycle your legs in and out. You will feel your hips and quads working, but you want to make sure that your abs are working to brace and protect that lower back. Make sure to really breathe and exhale every time you draw your knee in with this move. Even when you're short on time, you can get a great full body hit workout using these five moves. I recommend cycling through all five no matter what interval setup you choose to use. One of my favorites is the 30-15. You work for 30 seconds on a move and you rest 15 seconds between moves. Because I included a unilateral move, the single leg deadlift hop, I might also use a 30 setup, where I do 30 seconds on each move or per side of that move, and then I rest 30 to 60 seconds between rounds. You can use these five moves with so many different interval setups to meet your needs and goals and work what energy system you wanna focus on. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe, we're posting new videos each week. Plus, check the video description for some options to help you implement these moves in your routine.